Andelect, Lazen and Destru won the first console champions cup in a dominating fashion. They ended up winning round one, round two and round four and in round three they came second. So these guys were clearly the best trio in the entire tournament. So let's see exactly how they did it. Their drop spot was Catty Corner with Andelex landing on the main building, Lazen landing on top of the vault and with Destru landing on the south side. Andelex's main job in the early game was to loot all the peppers and the ammo boxes as much as possible before moving to get the mechanical parts. Lazen's job was to loot the main building and as much of the vault as possible, trying to get as many mats as early as possible here. And Destru lands on that south side, so he ends up looting the entire garage area here and also looks for storm surge tags on the players flying down to Camp Cod. Andelex then drops down to the construction building. Destru moves on up to the weather station and Lazen rotates around to the east hand side to get the additional loot here from the buildings down below and the base camp up top before eventually all three of them meeting at weather station together. The AI in weather station is always aggressive to you but once you eliminate him you get a guaranteed purple AR. If you've ever spoken to any of the AIs around the map you will know that when you speak to them they can drop you specific loot and in this particular game the final game of round 4 Andlex luckily gets a gold scar from speaking to this AI. But this isn't the entire reason they all meet here. Andelix gets a challenge from him which is to destroy the satellites which gives him enough gold to then use the challenge which reveals the next storm circle for them. So note the position where they're in, they can already see the second zone and where it's appeared and from this area they can then figure out where the third area is going to be and where they can rotate later on. Now the issue with this is that while doing this they usually rotate way too late and in some previous tournaments Andelix's team has been limited to storm surge because they have to rotate so late so they can't get set up into a good position. But in this game they notice the Camp Cod team rotating near the yellow steel bridge and they manage to get a nice bit of tags off on them. This is also the final game in the tournament so this game isn't as stacked because players are being a little bit more aggressive to get more points in that final game which means that storm surge isn't as big of an issue in this final game. Coming out of their drop spot Andelex, Lazen and Dez all have purple ARs. They have their pump shotguns, not necessarily good ones, maxed heals and Andelex himself has 12 peppers, Lazen has stinks with slurpfish and then Destru has a harpoon. So these guys are completely stacked, they could not almost have better loot except if they'd had better shotguns. So that was in the round 4, the finals where all the money is and where the highest quality of games are. But what about their final game of the opens? Now for most of the people watching this is a lot more relevant because you're not making it to a finals but you almost definitely will be playing a lot of the opens. Well this game their strategy was pretty much exactly the same. They still landed catty corner, they still had all of the exact same roles and routes to where they were going to loot in that early game. However the only difference this game is the fact that spark bugs spawned in catty corner which meant that they were able to upgrade their shotguns. Which meaning they all had at least purple pump shotguns so they were completely stacked coming out of their opens game. Now switching back to the finals, despite the fact it wasn't as stacked as some of the other earlier games in the tournament, they still really needed to focus on Storm Surge. So they did this on Rotate. They took a rotation path where they ended up going past Lazy Lake as there are normally teams fighting in here in the early game. And Lazen did manage to get off a large beam on one of the opponents, which again is a little bit more Storm Surge which adds up. They didn't commit to this fight by any means, but they just continued to rotate past. They pulled up on the edge of the second zone where there were two teams fighting again to third party. Now they didn't do anything stupid like jump in the box but again they just kept their distance and sprayed until they got a little bit more tags. If you notice this has been four different times where they've got storm surge throughout their games. They got their first storm surge while opponent was flying, Andelex got more tags on the team from Camp Cod who was rotating, Lazen then got some tags on the Lazy Lake team and then finally they got this team fighting here on edge which means that they're going to be probably okay for Storm Surge for the rest of the game and in this case they were 234 above. Like I said they didn't commit to this fight at all so they end up peppering away and to get in towards third zone. Because they're using the peppers they could actually catch up to this opponent team which was Natoka's team who by the way is an avid code resub user so use code resub in the name shop if you want to get to finals like him and I'm sorry the only clip I have of you in here is your team getting rolled by Andelex's team but they managed to get a nice triple beam off and pick up Nikki from their team. Now again, notice they're not trying to overcommit. Even though they have an advantage in a 3v2 situation, they're not trying to do anything silly. They do get their Storm Surge tags here, so they're completely okay for Storm Surge. They don't need to do anything stupid. They just need to confirm the win for the entire tournament by gaining themselves more points. With Nikki's not body, they do make sure they get a max pump on the headshot to ensure that they get as much Storm Surge damage as possible. A fourth zone pops relatively close, and this is where Andelex's very, very familiar strategy pops up where they really want to put a large focus into gaining high ground here. The teammates give Andelex completely camp mats and since 4th zone is close, you can see Andelex immediately checking through the cone to see where the zone is. 
He sees a free opportunity and just ramps over to Toka's team because he knows they're a duo that he's left alive from earlier. They create a long tunnel in from Destro and at this point when the next Storm Surge threshold pops up they're 308 above. The 5th zone pulls close and because they've already established this really high ground layer, Andalex just builds in and they have this really wide split on the 5th zone on height in absolutely the best place possible. But let's compare this to their opens game and see how they did this differently. In the opens game, rather than looking to push any teams or go for tags, because there wasn't that many players alive, they ended up just going relatively centered and getting into the gas station that they could harvest out for more materials, and honestly, they just chilled. Editing the walls beside them could have got them focused and gotten a team to push them, and these guys just needed some points at this point. So rather, they just vibed in the box, emoted, and just waited for the next zone to come. The fourth zone pulls close, but this time they didn't actually manage to get any peppers, very unfortunately. So, yet again, they make an extremely early rotate, something that's very, very noticeable in this team's playstyle. However, because there were too many established teams around on 4th, rather than grabbing high ground like they did in the finals game, they just stayed low ground, and thought about it, and kept that one in the pocket for later. 5th zone pulled close, and you could see Andalex really looking for height, but again, there were too many teams established on it, so they decided not to take it at all. To contrast, in the finals game, they're on height in the 5th zone because they put a hard focus on it earlier. In the opens game, they tried to do the exact same thing, however there were too many established teams, so they just decided not to waste their materials going for it at all and just stay on the low ground positioning. Moving on back to the finals game where they were situated on high ground, notice that there is an opponent team often in the 5th zone completely contesting them. Now usually there's two teams contesting height in 5th zone at opposite sides, and whoever pulls that first moving zone usually has a huge advantage in winning the game. So rather than just letting Kashri's team get, they used the peppers that they had earlier to instantly god ramp as soon as they saw the zone move and claim the high ground over them. This quick action didn't give Kashri's team any time to build up and allowed them to claim high ground going into the moving zones. If you've ever watched Andalex's team before, he is an absolutely incredible IGL, and he actually ends up getting no eliminations in this endgame hilariously, but he did just set up a fantastic tarp, where he is in front of the zone, building his teammates in, Destru is in the middle, just assisting, spraying as much as he can, and Lazen at the back, completely slaying. Lazen ends up dropping down for eliminations later on in the game, to try and get as many as possible, but notice how he doesn't overextend. He ends up just staying relatively far away so that he can always escape as possible and not get completely boxed in. If he gets shot, he can just claim back up to high ground with Andalex and his teammates. In the final moments, they all 3v1 collapse in on the final player, picking up the Victorial and the win in the entire tournament. But what difference did they make in the opens game? Because remember, they didn't have the high ground in 5th zone, they were on a low ground position. Well from here, they had a max distance zone, and you notice yet again Andalex looks high and he's completely focused on how to take it. So what they do is they start increasing their layer so they get closer and closer to high ground. But notice they're staying behind, they're not keeping ahead of zone like some teams usually would. Now they're continually looking at height, however there's too many teams contesting it, it looks like an absolute mess. So rather than yet again than wasting mats, they just decide to play a mid ground layer and play dead side so they get a free rotate in. Now the 7th zone ends up pulling back so they get completely as far ahead as possible. And yet again Andalex creates a fantastic tarp for them. Andalex's floor starts to get harpooned by the players down below so they start to double cone and floor to ensure that they can't get knocked down and that they can stay at this relatively high layer. 8th zone pulls like a complete max distance and again Andalex is consistently looking at high ground. They manage to pick up an elimination on one of the players and they all simultaneously crank up and take height in this final zone, Lazen using his creative mechanics that he's clearly been practicing. From then on out they have claimed the high ground and it's just to the job of suffocating the teams down below when they're trying to pull up this hill to pick up the victory royale in their final game. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Peace.